In this episode, we are going to be creating this cool sticky navigation where when we scroll past it, it actually sticks to the top of the screen. And if we scroll back up, we end up with it back down where it originally was positioned. It's a pretty cool effect because most people usually only have the navigation sitting at the top or always have it fixed at the top, so it could really make your site stand out. And we're going to build it just using HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. So let's jump into this episode. Welcome back. Let's start creating our lovely sticky navigation. And we're going to start with just an empty index.html. The first thing we're going to do is create a little bit of boilerplate. So I'm going to make this easier and use Emmet to create the document layout. Then I am going to import the little bits I need. So I will definitely need a little style sheet for this. So let's add in that. And we'll create that now so I don't forget it. Style.css. Down at the closing body tag, I am going to create our import for or our script tag to import some JavaScript. So let's call this index.js. And let's make a file for that as well so we don't forget about it. Great. Next, I'm going to create some boilerplate HTML just so we have something to play with as a page. So let's create a few sections here. So I'm going to use the section tag. We will put a navigation in the first one. So let's use the nav tag here as well to be real semantic. And I know I'm going to need to target this, so I'm going to give it an ID of navigation here as well. And inside the navigation, we'll make an unordered list. And we'll give it a couple of list items just to style up as links. We'll say link. Then let's add a second one. Just so it looks like we have a couple of links in our navigation. Then in that section, I actually want to add a little, I suppose, just a bit of hero text or something. So let's add in, hey there. And now let's create a, just a couple more sections so we can see a couple of scroll or a little bit of scrolling when we go through it. So we'll say section. And we'll give this H1s as well because I don't feel like putting in anything too complicated seeing because most of the work is going to be done on the navigation. And we'll say this is another section. I'm actually just going to copy and paste this a few times. Now let's just check over in our preview screen to make sure it's uh, showing up all right. Perfect. Let's jump straight into the style.css and add a little bit of styling so it doesn't look so boring and plain. And I'm going to start off with doing a, a, a couple of things to the body. And we will add a margin of zero to take out some of the browser defaults that are set by Chrome. I'm going to give it a font family of, oh, we'll just say Arial there because that's fine for this. And then to add a little bit of color to the sections, let's add in a section background color. So in the sections, let's go background color and we'll give it a nice pale blue like I had in the intro. So we can say this is 1EA. 2EB. Let's give the font a color of white. We're going to display this to flex just because it will make it very easy to position everything. I'm going to justify the content to center and also align the items to center as well so it's directly in the middle of the screen. We will then add a height 
of 100 VH just to make sure the sections take up 100 VH so that it takes up the whole screen. So let's jump over and check out the preview. Excellent. So obviously our navigation is in the middle of the screen as well because it's in that section, but we're going to take that out of the flow by using absolute and fixed positioning in a minute. The next thing I'm going to do is actually add a font size to these sections as well. So let's just target the H1s inside the sections. I'm saying sections, it means section. And we will say font size of 6VW. And this is just so it looks good on every screen size as well. Now, to stop this looking too boring, let's jump back over and you'll see everything's just blue right now. And I think I would rather have every second element a nice pink just to break it up a little bit. So to do that, we will first target every even section. So we can do that very easily by saying section, nth child, and we can say even. So for every even section, we can apply this style to it. And we'll say a background, and we'll give it the nice pink that I use for all of my nice uh, demos here on YouTube. So that's F107BA. Now if we save that and check back over, it looks a little bit nicer now, it's broken up. So let's jump back over to the code. We are going to start finally styling our navigation. So to start styling our navigation, let's go and target the ID of navigation. If I could spell it. And in our navigation, let's give it a height of 80 pixels. We'll give it a width of 100% because we want it to take up the whole width of the screen. We will say a background color of 111, so it's basically black. I'm going to also give a color of white so that the text can be seen. Not hash white, we'll just say white. We'll text transform to make sure that the text is all uppercase to make it a little bit uh, look a bit better. And then let's give a display of flex and align the items to the center. And that's just so they'll be in the middle of the navigation or not sitting on the top or not sitting on the bottom. We want the each link to look evenly spread out there. So by using the align items, we'll get that nice little effect. Now if we jump back over, yeah, you see the links are sitting in the middle here now. Let's give this a position of absolute. We'll say bottom of zero. And let's have a look now. And it's sitting where we want it, but it's not sticking yet. Let's actually just style up each of the links then. So we'll say the nav li, we'll just give it a very basic styling, so we'll say display inline block just so we can sit them beside each other. Next, we will give it a padding of 16 pixels and 40 pixels just to give it a bit of spacing. And then let's just add in a little border to the right just to separate the links. So we'll say border right and give it a one pixel solid and we'll make it like a nice gray so we'll say 3f 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 this might be too dark let's check it out and see i think you can see that it's meant to be a subtle enough effect here anyway so don't worry if you can't see it too well how we are going to basically get this to go from an absolute position, which is down here in the first section, 
to a fixed position up here is we're going to have to toggle a class on it. And we're, let's style that up so you can see what the two classes are like. So I'm going to actually remove this here because I'm going to want to toggle this behavior based on what it's doing. So it's only when it's not with the sticky class that I'm going to want this. And again, I'm going to use a pseudo selector to actually target it when it's not being sticky. So the sticky class will be styled very simply. We're going to say position fixed. Top zero, so it sits at the top. And if we go back to our HTML here and just add the sticky class just to make sure that it is working as expected. Let's jump back over. Okay, so that's what we want to toggle it to when it hits a certain point. So to Let's remove this because I know this is going to throw a bug in a minute if I forget that. So now for when it's not that, we can say navigation, or we'll hit the ID navigation. And we'll say the pseudo selector of not dot sticky. And then we will say position of absolute and bottom of zero. Excellent. And I love this uh, not pseudo selector because it lets us kind of toggle things between on and off very easily. So now we should have an absolute or back the way it was positioned with the absolute values because its sticky class has been removed. So let's have a look. Perfect. So now it's finally time to jump into the fun part and that's the JavaScript. Let's first off target the navbar in here. So we'll say let navbar equal document get element by ID and we'll say navigation. So now we have a reference to the navbar that we can use here. So the next thing we're going to do is create a function that will basically add or remove the sticky class. So let's create the function and we're going to call this add or remove sticky class. The naming might be a bit big here, but I'd rather be very verbose so people can understand what this function does. We're going to basically check about the window offset. And this is how we're going to do our calculation to see where the window actually is so, or how far down we have scrolled. So we can do that by saying window dot page offset, page y offset to be more specific because we want to know when it's scrolling on the y axis is greater than or equal to. We're going to have to find out the position that we wanted to stick. So we'll give a variable now. I'm just gonna make a placeholder. So we'll say let sticky or should stick position. And we'll figure out what we're going to or how we calculate that in a second. If it's should stick position, then we will want to actually add that class to it. So we'll say navbar dot class list and we can add the sticky class to it. I keep on saying else we're going to want to remove it. So we can say navbar dot class list dot remove sticky. So that's the logic. How we calculate how where it should position is we're going to actually calculate the offset to the top of the nav bar. And to do that is very easily. So what we'll say is this is actually going to be equal to the nav bar dot offset top. 
So that's how much space is between here at the bottom and the very top of the screen. So once it hits that number, it'll be greater than or equal to, it'll actually then toggle our sticky class. So we're not currently doing anything with the function yet. So let's get this to run when we're scrolling to check should we add or remove the sticky class. So window dot on scroll. We will run a function or it's going to equal this anonymous function here. And we'll say add or remove sticky class. Excellent. So let's go over and see what's happening now. Perfect. And that's smooth as well. Now we're toggling it. Now the problem with this, there's a small bug that we'll find if you played around with this too much. And that's if you resize the window, the calculations would actually be wrong here because we haven't had, we were only running this function on scroll and we only set up the navbar offset top when we initialize this function or, or this uh, index.js. So to fix that, I'm just gonna add a little thing here for the window.resize. When it resizes, we want it to actually recalculate the navbar offset top. So I'm just going to copy this down so if it resizes, that we get a new offset top to make sure that if we resize this window, we still have the navigation sticking exactly where it's expected. So that's it really for this video. I think that looks pretty good. If you found the video helpful, make sure you like the video and hit that subscribe button because I have a few more videos like this coming up. And until next time, happy coding.